Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching jQuery for Beginners Lesson 13 and in this video we're going to take a look at how we can control the CSS using jQuery. Wow. Alright then gang, so there's going to be times when you're designing websites that you want to change the CSS properties of certain elements on your web page on the fly. For example, if you click a button, you might want it to animate in some way or other. Now, to do this, you're going to want to use the CSS method that jQuery provides us with, and it's pretty simple, but there's a few different ways we can use it, so I'm going to show you a couple of the different ways we can do that now. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to check the value of CSS properties already given to certain elements, okay? So we can do that by, first of all, grabbing an element on the page. I'm going to do this one right here, social nav. So I'll do my dollar sign, then in brackets, I'm going to say I'm going after the social nav ID. And then I'm going to say .css, that's the method name. And then within brackets, all I need to do to check the value of a property is put the property name in quotation marks. So the property name I want to check is the position property. And what I'm going to do is log this to the console. So I'll write console.log so that we can see the value down here when we refresh. So I'll save that, refresh, and now we can see the value is relative. So it's got position relative. Cool, I can also check another property it might have, which is top. I'll press save and refresh. And this time I get minus 40 pixels. Cool, so that's how we check the value of a certain property already given to that element. Now, what if we wanna change it? Well, all we have to do is pass through another value into this CSS method. First of all, we say the property we want to change, which is top, then a comma, and then we pass through the value that we want it to be. Now, I'm going to say change it from minus 40 to minus 200 pixels. Press save. And this time you can see it's scooted right up here. I've said console.log, which is why it's logged this element to the console. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to take that off. Save again, just refresh to make sure it still worked, and yeah, it's up here. You can see now that it's, it was down here, and it's zoomed all the way up here. That's because we've given it this top property of minus 200 pixels. Now, we can chain these together, and we can do multiple different properties. I could say .css again, and I'll give it a left property, which doesn't currently exist, and then I'll set this equal to 100 pixels. So I'll save this refresh over here, and now you can see it's moved to the right a little bit. Okay, so we can do this as many times as we want. I could say .css and put another property value pair in, and this is chaining in action, which we've already learned about. So we can do this on and on and on, five, six times if we want, but if you're gonna change quite a lot of values, this is soon gonna become quite tedious and hard to read, right? It's not the best way of doing it. Yeah, if you're changing one or two values, it's fine, but if you're changing quite a lot of values, a better way to do it would be to pass through an object to the CSS method. So let's delete all this, first of all. And this right here between the parentheses is where we would pass the object with all those properties and value pairs. Now, just recapping back to vanilla JavaScript, if we were to create an object and store it in a variable, we'd say something like this. Uh, var my object equals, and then the shorthand for the object is this notation right here, the curly braces. And then what we do within here is pop all of our property names, like height, and then the colon, and then the value, which is, I don't know, 40, uh, comma. Next property would be um, speed, and then colon, the value, this can be 100, etc. So this is how we would write an object in JavaScript, right? Now, if we didn't store this in a variable, this object, it would essentially look like this, right? The object itself would look like that. So this is the portion, this is the whole object that we'd pass in to the CSS method. So if we copy that, or cut it rather, and paste it within here, that is how we would lay out our object within the CSS method, okay? Now, obviously, height and speed are not CSS properties, so we can change these. Let's change the top, the height, sorry, to top, because that is a CSS property. And we'll change this to minus 400 pixels. And we'll change this one to left. And we'll change that to 150 pixels. 
we'll add another, we'll say um, opacity, and we'll change this to 0.5. Then we'll add another, we'll say border top, oops, and we'll give a value of four pixels solid and red to that. And I think that'll do for now, but we can go on and add as many as we want downwards like this. And you, I think you'll agree that this is a lot easier to maintain. It's laid out more like CSS is laid out. Uh, so if another developer comes into your code or if you go back to your code yourself, it's gonna be much easier to kind of maintain or change, all right? So let's save that now and refresh right over here. And now we can see right here, we've got that border top of red. Uh, we've got the opacity kicking in, which is why it's kind of like opaque. And then we've got the left and top properties applied. Let's just double check by inspecting the element and go to the UL, which is right here. And we can see all of these styles have been applied to that element. All right. So that is the CSS method, guys. If you have any questions about it whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, I'm going to see you in the next video where we're going to take a look at the class methods. So until then, if you like these videos, please like, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.